Now I'd like to talk about whether or not Goodman Brown knew the purpose of his meeting. And I don't really have a definitive answer on this because we get shown a couple different things in the story. Uh, there's a line at the beginning of the story where Goodman Brown, the narrator describes Goodman Brown's purpose as this present evil purpose. And like we talked about in the last video, Goodman Brown knew he was doing something he shouldn't have been doing because he says, if Faith knew what I was going to do tonight, it would kill her. And that goes back to that surrealism. He says, that, or, or Faith says, I had a bad dream. Uh, stay with me tonight of all nights. Stay with me, Goodman Brown. And uh, he denies his Faith's request. He says, no, I've got to go. Just uh, stay here and you'll be safe and I'll be back soon by morning. But anyway, um, he he knows on some level that he's up to no good. Uh, but we have to ask ourselves, how much did he know about the situation he'd agreed to because there's a point not far away from the line of the present evil purpose where he's wandering in the forest uh, and you know the forest would be seen as something where it's it's the wilderness you know you've got the Salem settlement it's safe the town is safe the town is full of the people of God uh, it's you've got to worry about evil outside of the town not inside and so when Goodman Brown goes outside of the town, he begins to contemplate encountering evil. And he says at one point about meeting a devilish Indian behind a tree, and then he says, well, what if I should, what if I should meet the devil himself? And of course, then the stranger shows up right after that. But we have to ask ourselves, why would he think that if he knew he were going to meet the devil? Why would he contemplate, what if I should meet the devil? So I think we have to understand, Goodman Brown knows he's up to no good but he may not understand just how deep uh, he is in it. He's, you know, he, he may not realize how bad of a situation uh, he's in. He thinks he can handle it. He thinks he trusts himself. Oh, he's curious, I'll go, but he doesn't understand the extent of danger that faces him. And so a lot of students don't understand, well, why does Goodman Brown uh, even agree to go on this meeting? Uh, we come into this story, and it's the in Medeus Res. There's stuff that's happened. There's a conversation that's happened, apparently, between the stranger and Goodman Brown to make this arrangement. But Goodman Brown keeps the arrangement. He goes out in the forest and meets the stranger. And he immediately, when he meets the stranger, says, Hey, I've kept my covenant with you. I kept my promise. Uh, I came here. I met you. i got to go home. I'm done. Uh, and he says, my father, my relatives, the people of the town would be ashamed of me if they knew I were here with you, keeping a meeting with you. And then the devil laughs, and then the story keeps going. Uh, we'll talk about that in just a, oh, probably in the next video. But uh, we have to ask ourselves, okay, Goodman Brown knows he's doing something bad, maybe he doesn't realize how bad it is. Well, why? And we find out when we get finally to the forest clearing. It's one of my favorite scenes because the devil is in full splendor. Uh, that's a weird thing to say, but really he is. Uh, the devil has kind of a congregation of people and he holds, it's almost like a dark mass. They sing a song that's a misery song. Um, there's like candlelight, the trees are on fire. Uh, there's a lot of comparisons to a church uh, uh, a church mass or a church service but of course the preacher is the devil and so the devil is up at the pulpit with the new converts and the new converts are of course Goodman Brown and Faith Goodman Brown on one side Faith on the other and the devil gives his sermon and in the devil's sermon we find out why Goodman Brown kept uh, the promise of the meeting what did he get out of it and he gets something that's actually quite familiar uh, with why we do things we shouldn't do. He gets knowledge and secret knowledge, basically knowledge that he should not have. Uh, he's promised uh, forbidden knowledge and the devil tells us the forbidden knowledge he will share is the secret sin of the town. And he goes through that list. I mean, think about the time the story was written. 
when you read that list of sins that the town has committed, it's a pretty serious list. You've got dirty old men. You've got uh, widows who had a hand in their widowhood. You've got sons who have hastened their fathers to their graves in order to get their money. Uh, you've got, uh, you know, you've got the the funerals for the tiny uh, the tiny graves that there's just one in attendance and the devil is also in attendance. This is some heavy stuff that the devil uh, reveals about the town. And so Goodman Brown basically gets knowledge. Uh, if we think biblically of a similar story where someone does something they shouldn't for uh, knowledge in return, you may think immediately of Adam and Eve. You can't really get much more basic uh, than that story. But Goodman Brown basically the same thing. Curiosity. Uh, he's curious about the nature of evil. He's curious about uh, his own relationship with it. Um, think about he's new in his relationship with faith. So this may mean that he has reached a sincere faith, religious faith, spiritual faith, but it's still very fresh. And this may be kind of like his last hurrah, that he thinks, well, I'm about to leave behind forever the path of evil and instead pursue the path of the righteous. But before I start down this path, let me just see, let me take a peek at what's down this other path. Just a peek. I just want to look real quick. Just one glance, and then I'll go down this good path. And we find that there's a really scary line. I can't remember where it comes from, but it's basically if you stare long enough into a, a, the abyss, you find that the abyss stares back. And it's basically this idea that we can't just touch something and pull our hand away with it and be free from any effect. If you think of the movie The Matrix, there's a scene where Neo touches a mirror and he pulls his hand away and he finds that the mirror substance is on his finger and that it spreads and it basically corrupts his whole body. You know, the nature of evil may be the same. Goodman Brown, in his ignorance, thinks that he's strong enough in his faith to look at evil but not be affected by it, to know about evil but not be corrupted by it. And we find that that's not the case, that the devil lures Goodman Brown into a trap uh, and the carrot that he dangles is knowledge. You can know about people in town. You can know what they do behind closed doors. You can know about the nature of evil. And when he goes back from the meeting, he's forever changed. Uh, he cannot wash the stain away. Uh, it, uh, the last line of the text tells us that um, he went to the grave basically uh, in, in misery. He led a miserable life. No one uh, looked at his life uh, with uh, wanting to repeat it. I mean, it was just, he lived a, a depressing life uh, after his encounter with the devil, if it really happened. Um, and so, yes, I do think that Goodman Brown knew he should not have kept the meeting with the devil. But, human nature being what it is, sometimes we do things we know we shouldn't because we think, you know what, I can handle it. Goodman Brown thought he could handle it, and he couldn't.